Hey everyone, welcome back to 3D6 Down the Line. This is episode 39 of the Halls of Ardenvul Mega Dungeon by Richard Barton using the old school essential system by Necrotic Gnome. My name is John, I am your referee for the evening and going around the horn we have a full house starting with... Hi, I'm Mike. I play Gorand the Dwarf. <laughs> He's so plucky and <laughs> rather pleased with himself. It's the thatch. <laughs> the thatch. Uh, I, it is my thatch. I'm jealous. That's funny. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm I'm David. I play on where the illusionist. <laughs> Um, uh, hi, I'm I'm Matt. I play uh, Avaricius, the left hand of Lysion, with my new. Yeah, my that's new, right. Uh, oh name, wait, uh, what? Cup, uh, Where did you get oh, that? I made it. I made it myself. <laughs> that's the, the, that's the, amazing. Yeah, the, the merch team is pretty, a little slow, so I had to make my own. Dude, that dooms you to death. They're like you. Oh, are. Yeah. oh no! Oh no! For sure. No, 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 no. I wasn't. I wasn't gonna say it, but you know. I, I am the. I'm the left end of Lysion. It cannot mm -hmm. be done. He is the, I have his blessings. They follow me everywhere. We're we're good. Don't worry about. Pretty that. good. Uh, and I'm Ted. I'm playing Mortis J. Gobliano, and I got to tell you, I have no idea whether goblins have thatch or not. So <laughs> I don't know how to. I don't know what to do with that. Probably not. Definitively oh, yes. Make it so. There. Definitively yes. Oh, I love okay. it. Okay. All right. Uh. All right, so, and patchy. so we have a little bit of a, what do you call it, a uh, a, a, mm -hmm. a weird a break, a weird break in the episodes. <laughs> Last week, I made a big boo-boo, and I completely forgot to just turn on Ted's recording channel because I had spent the previous day recording the Dolmenwood Deep Dive, which you should all go check out. How at dare down you? Line. <laughs> uh, but I was a little bit too tired. I did not do my normal checks that I do before I hit record, and poor Ted uh, was never recorded, So, which is a real shame because we had a very fun episode. Um, but so what was normally going to be 39 last week, we're going to call 39 this week, and the lost episode will forever be known as 38A. Um, and uh, with that in mind... We're going to hand it over to the players here to give us a quick recap of what exactly happened in that episode. So take it away. Thank you, John. <laughs> Let me begin by saying that episode 38A was certainly a tour de force of creative energy, of acting <laughs> talent, and most especially of funny voices. It is a real damn shame that we lost that. There, <laughs> there were a lot, lot of, of funny voices. voices. Yes. Oh, bummer, so, man. Um, oh. If you rick oh, we're getting the we're getting the little video trick over it's David. Back. Out. It's yeah. back, baby. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, no. time time's a wasting. Let's get through the recap. Let's get this All right. started. So, if you will recall, at the end of episode thirty-eight, we were at the cavern with the different heights of different. There were many tunnels leading out of the cavern, and we had some very clever and complicated plans to go through that tunnel. And uh, in classic Mike form, he said heck with it and went over the edge and walked through the tavern uh, cavern and went out the tunnel and and matt's already going to amend the story uh, he did not say heck he said something much much okay. worse yes that's true <laughs> i can't pronounce it in dorvish but it was bad but uh you know spontaneity and uh, uh adventure worked out for us it was great so we got through the caverns and we ended up in a very large cavern with a very large bear in it Thankfully, Avaricius had a silence spell handy, and lo and behold, we just walked out of there and uh, made our way back to the uh, Broken Head by way of following the river late at night, managed to survive that, got sandwiches, got sleep, stowed our jewels, swapped out some uh, uh, retainers, and then, Matt, you want to pick it up from there? All right. Okay. So we did a little bit of stuff at the broken head uh, nothing too substantial just kind of started some conversations so one of the conversations that uh we kind of just poked around a little bit because we weren't really sure as a team whether or not we wanted to do this or not but we wanted to kind of get a feel from chronos and estelle after all the you know ups and downs with the w thing and the wind you know causing trouble at their place with the red w's and everything we um, wanted to just kind of get set some feelers out whether or not they might or might not be interested in some kind of limited partnership 
with them, like some kind of investment to help them cover the extra security and, you know, extra, um, uh, you know, uh, things that they've been doing at the end. And, um, you know, we kind of set the groundwork there. They had to think about it, which kind of mirrored our own, uh, you know, our own hesitation. Maybe we want to, maybe we, we don't. You know, there are pluses and minuses to do it. So, you know, we just kind of opened that conversation. So we kind of gave them a low ball investment number that they were going to think about. They kind of implied that that was way too low. Um, um, but uh, yeah, so we, we, we kind of lifted at that to, to come back and discuss more. Ted? Well, and I, I think it's worth adding that Kronos had a very good question, which was, what are you going to do for me? Uh-huh. And I'm not sure we can actually answer that yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other, other than just like, you know, like, you know, fronting some money to, you know, to, to uh, uh, offset some of the expenses that they've been going through. We didn't have a lot to, you know, on the table. So, you know, maybe yeah. we'll do that. Maybe we won't. We don't know. Um, uh, but the other thing that we noticed was like the five fingers were there. And I think Mike's going to talk about a conversation that he had. But um, we noticed that um, a couple of their members were actually gone. We don't know what they were sent out to do, um, some kind of mission or something. We don't know for sure. But uh, who was it? Oh, yeah, it was uh, Jenks and uh, Hixonius the, of the Glebe. That's right. Who um, great name? And a few of the and a few of the uh, uh, wine dark mer mercenaries also have been like sent off to go do something, and we don't know what that is. Okay. Do we know sent will... off by whom? Or uh, we, don't. we do not. We, we think by Roger, Roger, though. We think uh, by pro Roger. Probably Roger. The uh, uh, Estelle and Kronos had been asking around. Like they even asked um, uh, Sam and Lisbeth, who had been like our guards. They had given them some opportunities to go and um, actually kidnap uh, one of the goblins from down below to question question them about um, you know what's what's been going on with the wind and the W and all that stuff. Uh, we tried to sell um, uh, Codswallop and Mort to them for this, but it did not work. No. <laughs> not and, and just to Matt, we should just kind of go over some of the things we asked Kronos for. Oh, number sure. one. Number one, we wanted our own room with free room and board whenever we wanted. Number two, we wanted him to spy on other adventuring parties, which to his credit, he was basically like really uncomfortable doing, right? Number three, we wanted to be able to build a vault, our, our own secure room in the basement um, so that we would have a dumping spot for our massive amounts of gold that we're trying to pull out of there. And we wanted to put in, um, we wanted to put in like more defenses, like palisades and stuff like that. And then the thing that I'm really, really hot on that um, I don't know if anyone else thinks it's as cool as I do, but we know that Estelle has some sort of deal with the dragon, uh, Krusty Onyx, Crust, Crust. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a little big Krusty word. the clown. Trust the oh, Onyx. Hey, the you onyx. Know, the forget onyx. about it. You know, anyway, and um, I wanted <laughs> Estelle to tell us what the deal is with that because at some point I feel like anything that we try to accomplish um, on the surface level of Arden Vool is going to come up against that thing. And mm -hmm. um, and so, again, Kronos was just basically kind of like, mm, no, I don't really want to. So I think we got to come up with more cash and make it worthwhile, make make it worth their while. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I was trying to do is obviously um, Atticus, you know, fell Hi. to the hor horrors of the tr of the dungeon and um, I'm minus a henchman. <laughs> so I was trying to recruit one of uh, Roger Rapier's five fingers of destiny. I actually wanted the sixth finger. Um, that weird wizard with like the missing the eye who has the, the eye patch with the eye painted on it or Battle is rock. it just a is it a tattoo over his eyeball? It's a tattoo. Like yeah. It was Oh, oh skull, dude. I think, right? No, he has the skull yep. cap. It's a skull, and, um, though. The, the, the tattoo is a skull. Yeah. And so um, I went and I tried chatting him up with my eight charisma, and he, needless to say, was not very interested <laughs> in working for me. However, one thing that, you know, like I, I, I mentioned that we had a lot of money, probably a mistake, David, shut up. Um, but the one thing that I was um, that he was very interested in was when I told him that we may have come across a large library of spell books um, and that if you were willing to enlist with us, <laughs> I knew David's face was going to do that. <laughs> I know. We Don't told him David. where they were and that they were safe. <laughs> Don't worry, David. He thinks they're in Gosterwick. David had to walk away. He could. Oh my somewhere. god! He thinks I they're knew. in Gosterwick, David. 
I'm telling you, man. I, this I've guy's retired. Big... I, I'm announcing my retirement from 3D6 down the line. <laughs> uh, it's been, it's been a real is... ride, everybody. Oh, David, <laughs> David, he loved them. We showed them to him. He thought they were great. Yeah, we let him take notes. We let I, him wa- I want you to know good. that now that he knows that, I will kill him in his sleep. And you can't, you can't minge and whine about me murdering someone <laughs> you because that it's with your fate, fault, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> your, you killed him. I didn't. I'm just oh. the blame. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, anyway, so David, anyway, I mentioned that we had a large library of arcane material that we couldn't really use. That seemed to pique his interest. I did tell him that they were in Gosserwick, though. And, and then he killed this guy now, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you. I'm just giving you subplots, David. I, 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 you know what, Mike? I love it. I love it. It's great. It's great material. <laughs> All right. So, what happened after the conversation? What happened the next morning? Basically, oh yeah, what happened? We went. Well, we went. 10. We went back to the tunnels, and we went in through the uh, gladiatorial school, and um, basically, oh, this was a good bit. We made our way back to um, the sort of triangular cavern and followed the tunnel. Oh. Ah, wait, I got ahead of myself. We got up to the, the corner there where it says no, and we heard giant rats. And they were, you know, 100 so feet away from us. Um, and uh, so so Mort snuck ahead a little bit uh, until he was out of the lantern light and was trying to get a count of the rats using infravision. And um, <clears throat> so... And this was, I've never seen this happen. John rolled a uh, monster reaction roll and rolled a 12, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. And so he decided that they were like either very intimidated by Mort or more likely, eh, and just decided <laughs> to leave. <laughs> so they went north and we went right where they'd been guarding the, the tunnel. And then we went on a, a what, two, 300 feet or so. We can hear or smell more rats, but now we are at the entrance to a, where the corridor is widening into a very large cavern. We haven't really explored it yet. And I believe that's where we will begin uh, in media res, as they say. Indeed. All right. Well done. So, all right. So let's get uh, the situation right now. It is the 30th of Lagario. So it is the very last day of the month. For one thing, it is about 1050 in the morning. Um, and so it's almost 11 a.m. And yes, you are in the corridor to the southeast, as you can see on the map there, where, uh, and just a little quick correction, the, it's a, still a corridor. It just happens to be widening, but it does not look like, uh, at least as far as your light is showing that it's opening up into a larger cavern. It's just that the corridor itself is wider. Okay. Um, and you have with you right now, Yost and Elizabeth and Nyal are your three retainers, Sam and... Codswallop are back at the room, um, and Onweir magically appears with you. And I need to know what the spells are for both Avaricios and Onweir, so we can get reminded here. Have you go? Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Have you go, large, have you go first? Large is what reduce. I was going to say. <laughs> uh, David, do you want to go? Go ahead. Uh, one note from, uh, because I believe I used the improved phantasmal force to disguise the room the last time we were in it. Not that it mattered much with the scent, but, uh, big difference between improved and regular that I missed on the first read is that it remains for two rounds after the concentration is broken. So if I use improved phantasmal, it's, it's worthwhile for that reason. Uh, Um, so, uh, in terms of what's memorized, I'm going to go ahead and memorize uh, 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 chromatic orb. I'm going to memorize uh, Cleophallus' look away spell, mm-hmm. and I'm going to memorize uh, brain full of spiders and improved phantasmal force. Actually, cool. let me. Awesome. I, I might have. Hold on, one sorry. I, I'm actually going to do. Sorry, I confused the two. I'm going to memorize the Bracteros effect, not Cleophallus. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Avaricios? Okay, Avaricios has uh, Cure Light Wounds prepared two times in case we get into trouble. And as his level two spells, he's bringing Hold, Whoa. Oh. He's bringing, uh, right. hold, hold Person and he's bringing Silence. Okay, great. Uh, Lisbeth also has, uh, as a uh, level one druid, uh, she can also bring a spell. And uh, yeah, she's going to bring Fairy Fire. Fairy Fire, right on. Ooh. 
Okay, cool. So, uh, I forgot to mention. Yeah, Mike. Sorry, I wanted to see if David wanted to recharge that wand of cone of cold with some of the arcanum. Because oh, I do not. That's a that's silly, David. I don't know. How, I've, I've 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 used I've used one charge. You have no idea how many charges are left. No, but I know the arcanum is expended if I use it, and it is the most valuable arcane consumable I have. Basically, wand is the most. Oh, no, I got to agree with no, Mike. But you're the wizard. The item that allows me to recharge all of my spell slots or any wand I find is definitely more one valuable than per, one wand. Isn't it one spell slot for uh, one dose of Arcanum? I thought it would recover one spell. It could be one spell, but but when when I have level four spells, that's going to be more use. You, you get my point, right? Like, yeah, I hear you. I mean, yeah, I, I am. as a. Uh, uh, goblin military tactician, however, I have to agree with the dwarf's assessment of this uh, tactical usage of the wand. Uh, I think it is knowing you have six to eight extra charges is better than not knowing how many charges you have left and pulling it out and discovering it's zero. Um, hallway full of monkeys, bro. Hallway full of monkeys. How, how about this? Why don't I bring one of them with me? That is a Why don't you bring one of you with you in the wand? <laughs> I'm, telling, I'm, telling you, I'm telling you right now as the the mage who knows what this is and you have no concept of what this thing even is <laughs> as a dwarf i'm well i'm not using it on i've only used one unless every single charge but the last one was expended on this wand which is possible but very spiteful on the part of the design i would i would inevitably at least have one more charge on it it is yes. a decent, decent compromise if David just brings it with him or on where it does. Uh, it only takes yeah. a single action in combat to yeah. actually use it. Use it. It's not like a turn okay. long, turn long thing. He just has to get it out. Okay. But yeah. Right. Um, and I'm worst case, don't worry, we're good, baby. Like worst case, if if the charge in the wand right now is the last one, and he used it, it would what turn into dust or something and be yeah. dead forever. So basically, the wand is no longer a magic wand. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It loses it all together. It's dead forever. Dead. The wand. I did. I did not realize that was the case. So, so the gam. Mm. The, so the gamble here is: you think that there were more than two. You used one, and so you're. The gamble is: you're sure it's not the last one that's in. The I can game. almost guarantee you, David, that an item that powerful, there is no way it has like 15 charges on it. Oh, I don't gonna, think there's 15. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna look really silly when you try to battleship your motto that the next you know hallway full of monkeys. <laughs> And you got no bullets in the chamber, bro. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. No, no, I got you. I got you. I'm bringing the Arcanum right. with me. Okay. We've David, made our pitch. Yeah, I, David's mind is set, like so let's move on. There. Well, yes, yes, I, David does not know that we did taste test some potions. We not. have a the the we picked up three potions from the storage room under the gladiatorial school. Yeah, in the in the, with the treasure. Right. Yeah. And one of them we think might be animal friendship or something like it. One of them we think is heroism. And I don't remember what the third one was. Oh, strength uh, or something. I uh, took it. strength. Oh, yeah. 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 That's right. Okay. Some friendship right. and strength. Yeah. Th th okay. To coin it on, we are, there is no potion of strength. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And, uh, this is, uh, I, I should have said this at the top of the episode, but I just wanted to make it known to you guys. I, I don't know if you guys are aware, but also to the audience out there that this week is the one year anniversary of the Ardenvul campaign. We oh recorded our, I looked at it, we recorded our session zero of Ardenvul back on August 22nd of 2022. So wow. we are technically 40 episodes in uh, for 52 weeks of gaming, which I think is a pretty good track record for a group of middle-aged guys playing D&D. &D, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Is, uh, is it just it's me, long. or does it also not seem that long? Right? No, like, it does not. Yeah. I can't believe it's a year. Yeah, we're just, uh, just, how many just well, getting I guess started. Well, I'm going to ask this in the detox, but I want to know how many subs we had a year ago. I don't know. Yeah. We we get, we uh, we made a name for ourselves with Dolmawood, I think. So. Yeah, we did. We were doing okay. All right, so... Uh, that Time little class, note about the channel uh, away. Let's get back into it. So one thing I want to make clear as we go down into media res, first of all, uh, we sort of talked about the Discord, but I want to make sure that the audience is aware as well that time is an issue. We had a large argument about this. We'll call it a discussion <laughs> on Discord. The fact that um, how much time has passed since Isocritus was assassinated and what you are at right now. And I want to make it very clear to all of you that it has been six days since that has occurred. 
all right um okay. and you, you know that isocritus's body in that library was i can guarantee you was found sometime within those six days and then you have to ask yourself what okay. would garalad have done in response to finding isocritus's body after you had also heard them discuss that they had um deduced that it was you specifically that had infiltrated their level uh, <laughs> and we do not know who is high who hired them for their their dirty deeds what faction and and what scale of power that faction may have what influence the oh, hired garalad you mean we now, know Isocritus was in communication with someone on uh, top side right, and was right. infamous or famous rather worldwide for his skills. So for him to be doing such a specific amount of research in that location on on the dungeon probably has some affiliation with one of the major factions no, in Gostarik. To clear guess. that up, you you know for a fact who Isocritus, or at least one of the people that Isocritus was working for, was a Lady Alexia. That was... Man, the lady right? No, 100%. Yes, yes. That, that was told to you. That was told to you by the Thesmothete, that yeah. she specifically yes. wants to know about the regalia because she thinks that she can claim yes. the, uh, the 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 Burdocks Valley from her half-brother if she has that regalia. Which means the most powerful person in Gosterwick might be sending bounty hunters at us at any point. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Not when we give her... A pile of jewelry worth like thirteen thousand gold. Sure, I love your optimism. Anyway, let's let's go kill. Let's go kill Garolad. <laughs> I think it's also worth saying that Garolad doesn't know who we're working for. He has no idea whether we're independent or you know Lady Alexia's arch enemy or something like that. We he's he could be crapping himself because he thinks some big power is moving against him. So I, I, might... I not to quibble too much, but I think it would be a far larger stretch to assume that a, a entrenched network faction assumes the new adventures that have been here for less than a month are deeply connected to anyone in town when they could verify that information almost immediately that it was not the case. In other words, I don't think we should operate under the assumption in which we in which we have any leverage against Garalad. Yes. I, mean, but... I think we are really, really weak and easy targets to any large players in this community because we have already exposed ourselves uh, as such right that's a good point another another uh point that i think that may have gotten lost in the shuffle from past sessions that you might want to keep in mind is that you you're pretty much convinced now it's pretty, been pretty clear to you that where you are now in these tunnels is definitely was a means of egress or entrance for Garalad, right? Like you're pretty sure right. that his, his presence has been known totally. here, right? Um, and you're counting on that to be important or something that you can use or something like that, right? Um, uh, you should also remember though, that when you were prisoners down in Plunger Town, when you first met the NPCs for the very first time, each one of them was from a separate adventuring party that had mm -hmm. found their way in and were captured or found out on this level somehow but they had different means of actually entering in so you should just remember that guelph was the one the guelph's one was the one that you guys have taken glad the gladiatorial school right? right so that's the one that you took but you you have people that are well you there are two people sam who is alive tresty who is dead sam you should remember and that you can talk to if you go back uh to the broken head mm -hmm. she, she found a crevice on the long stair up on the cliff with her adventuring party she found and this is what she told you she found yeah. a crevice and mm -hmm. she entered in on the side of the cliff face found tunnels on that cliff face and was attacked her party was attacked by sand creatures of some sort baboons came in at the same time there was chaos she doesn't remember what happened she was knocked unconscious and then she was captured by the baboons and she woke up in the prison all right, so just keep that in mind. Tresty, who is dead, um, told you that her party had actually entered in from a cistern, an abandoned cistern far to the east, near a tower along the eastern wall where, ba where baboons could be heard cavorting inside. Mm -hmm. All right, so just keep in mind that there, you know for a fact that there are other ways to access this level that is not just the cave bear entrance Peter and, Kano. and yeah. the gladiatorial school basement. Right. Yeah. So I, I just, had, I'm sorry. I just had one question for David. Did you yeah. want to bring Sam or did you not want to bring Sam? I was, I was unclear on that. Cause if you're going to show up, it's kind of your choice. Yeah. You can wreck on her if you want her. One I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to leave her. <laughs> okay. I may regret it, but I'm going to leave her. Yeah. So oh, we, we did talk about David that we didn't want to leave just one person behind to guard the treasure. Yeah. 
Yeah. My, main, my, my biggest concern, especially given that like the other adventure parties at this in are showing signs of like splitting and having other objectives is that our, uh, in addition to the Garelad threat, our, especially if you just told the wizard that we have a stockade of what? gear, no, Mike, we, 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 he said specifically we had stuff in Gosterwick. But they, but they've seen, but that same character saw us bring in an enormous amount, of, and we have guards. Like, all I'm I mean, saying, all one I'm saying, anyway, okay, so, so yeah, it's fine. Well, but, I, I, but, I, 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 th- I want guards. <laughs> Sam is back yeah, there, yeah, no, and I, I have given her whatever she, if she protects it on a, on a theft attempt, I will reward her with whatever she asks. That's what I've told her. <laughs> okay, let's dive so, down into yeah, Ted. I'm sorry, John. <laughs> One so of the things nice. I, I know it's classic. Right? <laughs> I'll get it out quick. So uh, we talked about maybe talking parlay with uh, and and influence on Garalad. We know his entrance and stuff. I'm kind of thinking from what John just said, like he he may be like, yeah, people get in all the time. You shut your pie holes, kind of thing. So we should just keep that in mind that I don't think we're going to have a lot of influence on him. Okay. 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 So now switching over to Albert. The party is right yes. here. We super are right there and loving right. it, John. I want you to know that. Yeah. So if we scan over for the audience here, they came in from this basement right here. Okay. And this is the second time that they've gone this route, but this is new territory that they're in right now. So um, once again, you have Elizabeth is carrying the lantern. Um, it is in the midst of its use right now, just so you're aware. And so there are one, two, three, there are eight of you right now total in these dark chambers. Now, as you said, as you were heading south, let me just check if you're on a slope or not. No, this is actually flat right here. So it's been flat since the triangle room. You can hear uh, rats, again, coming from down the mm-hmm. southwest quarter behind you, right? Mm-hmm. Like squealing and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of giant rats that were that were uh, definitely coming, uh, heard from that direction. Um, the quarter however widens to basically 50 feet here so i guess yeah actually all told i would think when your light sort of blooms into that widened quarter that you would actually consider it a chamber more um now you along this path all the way back to the triangle room has been relatively clear gorn has noticed of of scree and stuff like that there is mushrooms growing on the side Otherwise, it's completely dark. Don't, it doesn't really smell anything more than just the normal dankness of the caverns. Uh, you do notice... Uh, yeah, so that that's the deal. So uh, it widens here. What do you want to do? Well, Sean, I wanted to say, because I remember um, from last time you had made uh, a similar description of this like larger area seeming more rough. Possibly, uh, would it be realistic to in- interpret that as maybe less traveled or at least more difficult to travel through this room? Okay, so I was wondering if I mentioned that. Yeah, so you, the, the the off thing about this section here, looking forward, is that there does seem to be a relatively, uh, a, a normal amount of scree in the midst of the room, right? Like Gorin has been able to sort of show you that because of foot traffic that it's, that's been stamped down or basically shoved to the side a little bit. But here it seems like the middle of the, if you just go straight down the middle of the, uh, the widened quarter that it's, it looks like there hasn't been any foot traffic, which is weird because right where you're standing, there's, there seems to be foot traffic. Guys, I, I really think that there's a secret entrance in that North South, like that left 50 feet that we just passed. That would be like the perfect place to have something cut directly east. The stone is natural, though, John. Right? It's not, mm-hmm. or it's is it worked? It's not worked. Yeah, could still have a secret door. Wait, so let me get this straight. This bit here appears to have foot traffic, but the last two hundred feet did not. Is that what you're saying? Uh, where you are now has foot traffic, and, and where you came from, but then ahead of you, that appears to be ahead like of us. yeah. Mm-hmm. In the widened yeah, part of the that's that's what that's I was thinking. Like, then, Matt. Yeah, maybe somewhere in here there might be like some kind of secret entrance, or I don't know, collapsible wall, or maybe something above. Roll a rock out of the way. I'm not sure. Yeah. But well, it, the it obvious like it might be worth looking. And the obvious place to look is where that scree changes. 
unless someone's actively like hiding their tracks by backtracking and creating foot traffic and then going where they want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Like if you come out of the secret door, that's where your footprints start. You follow. Yeah. So if you're changing the scree in both directions, that's extra effort, which is not impossible, but that's all I'm saying. Right. So, so John kind of riffing off of what Ted's saying, are there any additional scuff marks in the dirt or in the floor that would show where something slides um, repeatedly, like, like looking for like where uh, if there's a, a, a secret door that's worked to look like natural stone, it would scrape across the floor. Is there anything that looks like that either on the floor or the ceiling? Um, are you looking ahead of you or are you looking like right where you are? Right where kind of like where the, the cleared area of the scree terminates, like somewhere in that area. Okay, so like maybe a, Gorn, I'm going to say feet in the direction from that kind of thing. Or. Gorn, because you asked and you're a dwarf, uh, I'll say that you can spot. Uh, you don't see what indicates like like an arc or anything like that through scree. Once again, the scree is just really basic. I'm just talking about right. little bits of rock. Um, but with your trained eye, Gorn, you can see that there is a very narrow uh, scree-free. Uh, section that is basically hugs the northern wall as it uh, dies southeast. So, like, um, like a so little here, as if, right there. guys, as if somebody is walking around a pit trap or something or like that. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Boy. Okay, John, I'm going to get down on my hands and knees. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to reach out with my spear ahead of me, and I'm going to kind of jab the floor where that scree area is okay. and see if I can f detect some sort of pit trap. All right, so you go so in head first, then, is what you're saying. Well, I'm going to go on my tummy so that, like, I don't teeter into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah, I follow it. Yep. So you, you do, like, a little crawl on your belly. Forward. Yeah. Like Jab the spear crawls. down. Yeah. All right. And lo and behold, when you press your spear down, what appears to have been a canvas that was camouflaged mm -hmm. and painted to look like rock collapses under the weight of your spear and yanks down a large oh. section of uh floor that like the, the canvas like falls into something and you can oh, hear like Pat, a flat nice spot, well, nicely well, done. Done. Or Matt, nice. Matt spotted it. Good job. Matt noticed that part there. Yeah. Made us look that. Well All right, done. That's awesome, well done. It, it appears to have been the, a, uh, pit? well, the first of all, the pit appears to be professionally dug. And it's a it's relatively, um, you know, but it, it is approximately about fifteen feet by fifteen feet square, quite okay. large. Okay, you can see beyond. I mean, you can see beyond. That's the that the um, uh, at the very limit of Lisbeth's uh, lantern. That there is still you know a wide corridor. There's still like scree over top the middle there as well. You know, but um, but you have definitely uncovered a pit trap. And looking over the edge, it's dark. Of course, um, you don't see any. Uh, heat signatures from your dark vision um but that it also appears to be about 15 feet deep cool i want to know who professionally digs pit traps <laughs> paul Hoblins. Yeah. yeah paul the professional um, pit trap digger yeah that makes can sense we, uh, can we get a light like he's a good guy you some... know yeah let's can look we... in the pit yeah let's there look might be some light victims pass, in there. yeah pass up the pass up the light to look down yeah so you look down and it doesn't appear to, there's no like punji sticks or anything like that and there's no corpses or and does not appear to be anything shining down there it looks to be just uh like a just a you know a, a you know a roughly dug pit is that because it's or, now covered by the canvas it's not totally covered but no the canvas is sort of bunched up on the ground just from where it fell okay okay do yeah. we want to rope down there since there aren't punjis and just make sure there isn't some other means of egress it's kind of weird that there's nothing but just a just a hole down there right well, it's a fifteen no, well, foot drop. A little bit it, weird. It tells to me. It, it tells me that like probably Garalad or whatever uses this as a as a like adventure snagger, and he That's wants fair. to capture them alive so he can like find out what they know. That's yeah. fair. That's and fair. feed them to baboons. Mm -hmm. um, um, and John, so how wide is the walkway next to it? It's about three foot wide. Is it so, safe enough for us to traverse? Yes, it is. Three okay. feet. Yeah, but you can see that so, the edge of the pit actually on the other side, like abuts the southern side. So you, the only path is along the northeast side there. 
So just kind of okay. keeping that in mind, I'm going to go first, John. Again, I'm going to kind of go on my hands and knees on that. On that, I'll sling my shield over my back, um, spear in one hand, and I'm going to look. I want to look for traps along that walkway. Mm. On the walkway itself. You know what I'm saying? The walkway itself to see if there's something else that might bonk you into the pit or poison arrows or something. Sure. No, the, old, like the, old that. Pusher, the old pusher bar. Exactly. That, that'll, exactly. That'll, that'll take a turn to be thorough. You okay with that? I got a bad yeah, feeling. I'm okay with that. You guys okay with that? Yeah. yeah. We got lamp oil. We're good. Don't mind me. Okay. Yeah, good one, guys. My favorite words. Don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> Everything will be fine is my second favorite word from John. <laughs> uh, I've always been partial to, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> no, no, no. The, the riskiest is always is, oh, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> okay, so you. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. You're, you're very careful. You're looking around and you're like, you know, you're, you're fairly sure that the, the walkway, at least in the northeastern thing, is, is safe. At, okay. least, at least to the edge of Elizabeth's um, lantern light. Okay. Right. Which we're, which we're, remember here, I'm just sort of from meta wise, just ease of use that I'm saying I'm expanding lantern light to a 50 feet just so it, you can always determine that it's one square. Right. So at the edge of your map right there is what you're detecting as safe. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Let's, uh, let's keep going. I, yeah. Yeah. Let's keep going. So well done I'll, again, Matt. That was, that was really, no, and, not and going, I'm not going down the hole. Okay, so all of you are uh, hugging the northeastern wall and continuing past that point. Yes, yeah. that's yes. correct. Okay, but I think we need to be on our guard now, guys. And um, John, let's um, be using the spear to tap aggressively the floor ahead of me. Yeah, go ahead, Ted. Uh, not to complicate things, but you know, if we leave that tarp down there, it's obvious we've been here. Maybe, but you got to think that a tarp probably falls in every once in a while, right? Like rats, I was thinking, yeah. I was thinking that too. The rats, like, or or just maybe they didn't secure it correctly. Maybe one of the monkeys right. will get in trouble for not. Why don't, why don't you pull a chicken out and throw it down there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Clarice, I haven't pulled anything out today. You know, you know what? I, you know what? I'm going to pull out. Um, you know, a, a, a ferret. We haven't had a ferret yet. It's got to be uh, something heavy enough to trigger the trap. Ah, yeah, he chewed it. He's fell. He's gonna run around in there. They'll still figure it out. So you, you throw a I ferret say, down there? Yeah, I give I give him like a little kiss. I'm like, you go, you're mean, going to dude. do a good job. You go down there and you just like chill. And I let him go down. Okay, he goes down. He starts squeaking. It's not particularly loud, but he's not particularly happy to be down there. He's 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 trying <laughs> to scrabble back up after a little while. Um, he doesn't I, I, I also really reach, weird. reach into the bag and I pull out a little toy for him to play with. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love that. I I I'm not the monster. All right. Yeah, of course. Of course. Girl, <laughs> ferret, 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 ferret in the pitch wrap. Got it. Okay. So, Ted, are you ready to map? Oh, baby. Okay. Ted, so Bring it goes in that general direction for another square on that vector before sort of closing back up again to the original 12 foot wide width, right? Well Something done. Like and, that? And it, yep, and it and at that point, it actually uh, goes back to its normal width, and it starts to head directly east at a ninety degree angle. All right, um, as you kind of so. sidle around the side. However, uh, what is the uh, what's what's the marching order? Basically, well, I don't I don't have time for eight people marching order. It's going to take forever for you guys <laughs> to tell me that. You can um, just know that I'm in front, John. Who's in the back? And, who's in the back? That's all I, I want to know. I, me, Onweir, as uh, you. Um, as, uh, yeah, Ted, yeah, that's, that's basically right. It's fine. Okay. So as you sidle around the Northeastern side and Elizabeth's torch, actually that, at that point, we passed another turn behind you on where you hear a scuttling sound that is not the ferret. And as you whip your head around into the darkness, you can see just by the by the by the back end of Lisbeth's lantern light, another canvas that you actually didn't walk over because you were huddling their northeastern wall that was directly in front of the one that you had tossed falls down and is replaced by two long spidery limbs that haul themselves out of a secondary pit, hauling a gigantic bulbous 
abdomen past it as well with a head of dripping oh, fangs and eight eyes love it. as it love pulls it. itself um, chittering out of the pit and rears itself above you are we talking child of ungoliant here i mean not that this big, is, but it is a giant not spider. That, okay it is okay a big ass spider that pulls itself out of a secondary pit and it rears um, itself up and attempts to destroy you I, I would like it to not. Uh, yeah, I, will, I, I mean, is it, is it, is it right I mean, there with us? It, it, it is, but it, that, that's more, I did it more for dramatic effect because it's crawling up out of the darkness. So there's a chance that it actually surprises you. So I need you guys, one of you to, why don't we have Onward do it? Onward roll a d6. Don't roll a one or two. Yeah, man. <laughs> he looks nervous. He should. Oh, oh no! Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> oh, you got a DC retainer. Uh, Great roll. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that that was a two. In just in case anybody didn't get it. No, listen. You were told not to roll a one or a two. Oh, All right. I thought that was oh, a critical success. Oh. All right. All what, right. What, Can he have re roll since he obviously misheard you? What's your yeah. AC on? What's your AC on? Where? <laughs> oh baby, my AC is know. a a a healthy eleven. You gotta get good, bro. <laughs> All right. Oh. What did I roll? Okay, so it rears up and it it plunges down with its uh with one of its um uh arms try, uh, trying to like impale you, but you see it just at the right time and you scuttle back on all fours on when you're like, oh shit. It goes, it does the classic thing where the 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 foot comes down but it's like right between your legs right just as your legs split open you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know and it and it misses you uh you can uh, a a sizzle of venom drips from its fang in front of you and uh sizzles in the ground right next to its leg as well it looks extremely venomous and very n very nasty all right okay. roll for, uh, anyone casting spells I am not going to cast a spell. Onward, do you want to move out of melee? You have to declare it. Uh, huh. <laughs> Be onward, before you it shouldn't be a big decide, thinking thing. <laughs> before you decide one way or the other, I want you to know that Yost is wearing a periapt of proof against poison. So if that helps uh, your decision at all. I, I think, uh, uh, is, is a wand a spell declaration? No. So I'm going to not declare spells. I'm not going to move, but I'm going to test Mike's theory. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Right. Everyone, I need someone to roll for initiative. Please go. Uh, uh, David, I think this is your this is your baby. I got a five. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought that was David. Want me to roll? David, are you rolling? Someone roll for initiative. Let's go. It's, it's coming. There it is. Okay. Two. Two. Okay. All right. It is going to attack on Weir again as it lunges down with its teeth. Here we go. I oh, hit. Yeah. Okay. And it's going to do two points of damage. I need you to make Ooh. a save versus poison, please. You can make it with a plus two bonus. That's good for you. Let me see. Death poison. I got a thirteen. Okay, so I roll d twenty. Gotta find the d twenty. Where are you? There we go. Ooh, you got All a right. plus two, and you get a plus two, so that makes it right. Yeah, it makes it thirteen. I have a, d I have a thirteen. Yeah. Oh, so I you just eleven plus. 10. You just made it then. All right, fantastic. <laughs> All right, so it uh, it strikes you, but it, uh, the poison does not enter your bloodstream, which is good. And you're like you cry out in pain, um, and it is firmly. It's basically like Shellab over top Sam sort of environment right now, right? Like she, it's like just on top of Onweir, so it's mm -hmm. like all over him, just like dish, 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 like clashing on top of. Him. Um, that was its turn. Okay, uh, there's a twelve foot wide corridor, so you guys have no problem basically shuffling, uh, you know, to meet it. The you cannot get. Just so you're aware, you cannot get around behind it because its back is to the pit. Back right. is to the pit. Mm -hmm. And you, um, but you, and so I would say like probably three people could be in melee with it. Onweir is one of those right now. Okay, go. Move. Uh, John, how, is it bigger than like a dog? Is it bigger than a cow? Like, 
yeah, it's it's big. It's um, it's uh, it's about five feet long. So Ooh. like a cow, maybe. Yeah, cow size, sure. Sure. Right. Cool. Okay, guys. Do well, you, I was going to try to troll try to... rush it into the pit, but I don't. Yeah. I don't know. What, I don't even know what the mechanics are for that. John, I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to put my shield up like this. I'm going to mm-hmm. put my spear out like this, mm-hmm. and I'm going to try and bull rush that big old spider right back into the pit. Yeah, you know what? I, okay. And I think if Nyal saw you making that move, he could jump into and like. If they can, can they both try to push? Are you trying to attack oh. it with your bladed weapons, or are you trying to just push it? I was just going to push it. Okay. I just want to point out goblins have a really good poison save, as does Yost. So maybe Nyal is not the person to push it in. A question question as well for the group, to be quick. We're pushing a spider that can climb vertically into a pit with the nope. with, with what objective? This is going to land on its on its on its back with its legs waving in the air, and then we can rain death on it for like All a right. turn. Let's do it. All right. I can also use the wand, but if you don't want me to, okay. All right. All right. We don't want you to use the wand. Right. I'm going to get in All front right. of you in the wand. All right. All right. <laughs> that didn't okay. work out well for Neil last time. So I hear, I hear I wouldn't do Gor- Goran's moving into melee. Who is the other person moving into melee? Uh, Matt? You, I think okay. all the fighters. Go, no, go ahead all, with your... Two with people your, only. I need Goran and, and who else? Me and Yost. Yost. Gorn and Yost. Okay, cool. Uh, they are moving in. It is now missile. That would be the time for the wand on where if you want to do it, you can super. You can overrule now, everybody. I, I'm going to hit him if I do, so I can no longer use the wand. Okay. Uh, okay, melee. Go, Gorn. All right. Ha-ha! That sucked. <laughs> AC, AC is 12. AC is 12 for the spider, just so you know. Uh, I got a 7. All right, so you attempt to push it but, back. But I but am it... not trying to attack it, right? I am just trying to... Yeah, that's, that's it. still it's still an attack. Okay. So you, uh, it basically it sits itself back on its legs, and you just, you're not able to... It, it has plenty of leverage. Um, gotcha. However, it's followed up by Yost. Yost, using his spear crossways as like a bar to just like grab its legs and, and trip it and it, push it into the pit. Any, any magical bonus of the spear does not apply in that case. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, there we go. Oh, oh that's an auto a hit. natural 20 from Yoast. Oh. I think that is very I good. I want to be as cool as Yoast someday. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So yeah. Yoast, uh, what I'm going to say is because you got the critical hit, it's very easy to interpret. So you're not going to do any damage to it, but Yoast just basically right. storms up, puts all the weight of himself in the spear, um, takes advantage of the fact that it's distracted by Gorn, and you knock it over into the pit. It squeals as it, uh, as it, um, as it uh, hits the ground, I'm going to say that there is a one in six chance that it actually lands upright, which will allow it to get out much quicker. All right, I'm going to roll that right okay. now. Here we go. And it doesn't. It is upside down with its legs like. Ah, ah, it looks really gross. Amazing. Nice. Nicely done. Uh, yeah. And the rest of you who have not acted, you can do something if you like. Um, uh, are there any easily dislodged boulders? <laughs> unfortunately not. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I think I'm going to, um, just have oh. Avaricio swap out his mace for his, um, uh, for his sling. Okay. And I'll have, uh, Elizabeth take out her, take out her sling. She's going to sit down the, um, lantern right. and take out a sling. You both take out your slings. Okay. On where you want to do anything. You don't have to. Okay. I don't have anything I can do. That's fine. All right. Uh, top of the round. Uh, spells. Nobody. Roll for initiative. Uh, no spell. Roll for initiative. I got a two. I'll roll. All right. Go ahead. Uh, yes. three. Uh, three. Right. Nicely done. Well, okay. We do it. Uh, moves. I assume people all move up to the edge of the pit. Yes. I do not. <laughs> On does not. Okay. I move back. Towards the direction we haven't yet explored. <laughs> Very good, but the sling the sling throwers, I assume, do go to the edge of the pit. Yeah. 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 Okay. Then it's melee. I mean, then it's a uh, missile. Missile weapons go. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, uh, Avrisho. So this this is going to make some noise. He's banking on the fact that maybe we're far enough away. All right. Um, and uh, so he's gonna roll his d twenty. Oh, shrieker. Sweet. That is a. That's a hit. Uh, 12 plus, uh, what's his? Uh, it's fine. AC is 12. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's a plus three to hit. Yeah, so he's got a 15 to hit. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is 1d8 plus two for damage. So he's going to roll that. Nice. Nice. 
it's a six eight points of damage eight points of damage okay so with uh so it's a cacophony right here first of all because you were in a uh, you were in a corridor, right? So basically the echoes are going to shoot up and down. You have a ferret squealing. You have a spider squealing. You have a sling squealing. <laughs> and so it's just like a super loud, uh, just horrendous sound here. But as your stone hits the spider, it uh, it hits directly in a very vulnerable spot on its soft abdomen or something like that. And all of its legs like sort of curl around the wound as it squeals. And like you see a big gout of blood because it appears to have actually penetrated this the shell um and uh but it is still uh thrashing around on the ground trying to ride itself but it looks like you nice. really really hurt it okay that, that was the intention all right and uh Lisseth will let loose with her uh quiet sling smart Ooh. uh and she's not going to hit she rolled a six okay uh plus you know so yeah, that plunks gets... into the ground anyone else with melee weapons i mean uh, missile weapons Mike? Uh, now missile weapon, sorry. Okay. Now, <laughs> Mike Seeger. Uh, we're at spells, no spells, so melee. So let me ask you this, John. If I were to take my spear and put it like right between my legs and just pogo stick down on that spider, what, what would the impact be? <laughs> what do you think? Of? Well, you're going to take damage, no doubt. You could roll to a hit okay. though and then, then, and then get an attack, but you can't do it this round because you that would have been yeah. part of your move. Uh, Landing on the spider doesn't... Uh, uh, count as a cushion? No, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> oh, yeah. all right. Then I, what I, I, I would give you, is... I would give you oh. because you're not trying to hurt yourself. Obviously, I would give you like a one in six chance that you'd actually land correctly. But you okay. know, it's hard, right? I mean, you're jumping 15 feet down straight onto a spider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um. All right. So instead of that, then I'm going to ready as soon as that spider comes within range. I'll I'll try and stab it. Okay. So I'm basically not doing anything. You're bracing your spear, though. That's important. Yep. Okay. Uh, any there no other melee attacks, right? So we it is the spider's turn. So it is going to use its action to uh, right itself, and then it's going to uh, crawl up and out, basically. So it uh, it writes itself, and it's like and it comes right up at the top, and we'll call that the top of the round. Okay. So that is that. So no one's in melee yet, so we don't have to declare no spells though. Still, guys, right? Correct. Okay. Cool. Roll for initiative. Go. I got it. Uh, Okay. okay, I got a three. You got yes. a five. All right, you guys win. So it comes right up, but you guys are totally ready to meet it as it crawls back over the edge. Moves first. Anyone want to move? Okay, okay, so we're not in. Fly behind me and let me ice this guy. Dude, it's almost done. Yeah, yeah, yeah I he's really hurt. I want um, Mort to move up into melee, but other than that. I'd... Yeah, and Avaricios and Lisbeth will move back since we yeah. are not in melee. We'll make room. Okay, cool. So it should be Gorand, um, Yost, and Mort in melee with the spider. Got it. All right. So unless you want to put you all in there, Matt, uh, is uh, is there room for four around him? Room for three. Only, only three. No, you guys got it. It's okay. Okay. Y'all will y'all will come back if the thing skitters around. He'll attack it to pr protect us, squishy. Okay. Smart uh, missile attacks. I assume not because it might hit your friends. Correct. Right. Okay. Cool. Melee. Go. All right, I'll go. <laughs> no good, no good for <laughs> Gorn, unfortunately. Four in a row. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Mort will leap in there and try a little Sam action on the old spider. Okay. And um, that is an That's 18. Nice. That's it. Plus um, three for the dagger, plus one for. Uh, or sorry, plus two because he's a level higher level. So I assume that hits Tw 23. Yeah, it's a hit. Yeah. AC okay. 12. So that's a D eight of damage. That's a five plus, um, wow. plus two for my strength. And then plus three for the, dagger. The, uh, the dagger, the pin adds plus two, to, plus three to damage, right? Yes. I don't know. Yeah. You should have it down. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, you plunge the the pin in uh, like Samwise Gamgee, and the thing collapses on top of you and rolls off with all of its legs collapsed inward. Eh. Nicely done, all dead. David, do you want to harvest some of the venom? Yeah, we should definitely try. I mean, it depends on how much time it takes. A turn uh, has passed because of the combat. 
I don't really Do care. Man. I, 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 hmm? Is, is Guys, there I, we made a lot of noise. I don't think we should hang I don't want out to sit here. Around. Yeah. I, I think I think our uh, stealthy entrance is 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 under. Yeah, let's just keep moving. In, unless there's a pile of gold in the pit. Yeah, we didn't something. look in the pit that it yeah. had. Okay, shining I'm, your light I'm, down in the pit, you see that there does not appear to be anything down there except nasty, sticky webbing. Nothing glowing. Nothing pinging off of vision. Okay. Um, we found stuff in webs before, but I, I'm, I'm we'll willing to back keep it. it. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, continuing on, uh, uh, breathing heavily, you look down uh, with Elizabeth's lantern towards the east. It appears to still be level here, going directly east, and it goes for another fifty feet directly east at the end of that 50 feet it does continue onwards toward the east generally 90 degrees however there is a branching corridor that branches off to the south generally heading southwest at approximately give me one moment uh let's see here that is i can't read it uh Oh my god, I can't read my protractor. Sorry, hold on one second. <laughs> it's like black on black, so it's like really hard. That's the nerdiest thing I've heard in a le- at least tonight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm very carefully mapping everything here. At about a... Um, is that right? Yeah, like a 20 degree angle to the southwest. Southwest? So it really yeah. doubles back. Uh, no, like I'm sorry. I'm, I'm reading this wrong. I need my, my, my app work better for me. I don't know why I can't use my regular protractor. Uh, Is it going back this way, John, or kind of like forward and down? No, it's going Southwest. It's going Southwest. So, so it doubles back. back. Um, I'm just going to guess it. Um, it's probably about like a, not 45, but, uh, like a fit, like a 60, 60 degree angle to the southwest. Oh, so just start sharp. Okay. okay. Yeah. So more like down this way. Yes, that that's uh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And we could go straight as well. Yes, correct. Yep. Okay. Well, that was we, hard. We've done this before. Is can we determine if there's foot traffic one way or the other? Yeah. Uh, indeed. So it appears to be that the southern passageway going southern southwesterly does not appear to have any traffic. The do we, ahead, it does appear that the 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 corridor is free of scree. Yeah. Guys, I have an idea. I, I wonder, like we've done, we did this before when we were first coming down these caves. I wonder if we send the two guys with dark vision up ahead, like twenty feet or something, so that yeah. you'll get a, a preview before our lantern light comes into into view. Yeah, I'm not opposed to that. First of all, can I just suggest that we dim the light really quick here and see if there's any more of that um, infravision writing on the walls. Or for okay. that matter, any other little sounds or clues or anything from anywhere. Yeah, I mean, right. it's a bullseye lantern, so she can shutter it. Yeah. Do you want to okay, take so a turn to it, be really well, careful? And really... I, think I wouldn't say no. I think it's worth yeah. it. It's Listen, worth it here, for sure. Check it out, yeah. Considering okay. the amount of sound we just made, it'd be nice to know if something's coming. Yeah. Okay, so you're really careful. You shutter the lantern, and you just sit quiet for a second. You can hear far off of the distance, you can hear the ferret squeaking. Um, off to the northwest. Otherwise, you don't see or hear anything. I hope that if someone Definitely. comes along that that scene we left behind, they think that ferret took out that spider. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> mm-hmm. That would be great. Oh, it's got sharp teeth. <laughs> the bones <laughs> or the chitin, I guess. Look at the chitin. All right, so um, guys, there's no signage here, right, John? No signage. Right. Okay, so. Which passageway, number one? Number two, um, that's two pit traps that we discovered, like, back to back to back to back. So the one thing I would say, Matt, is it's probably a lot harder to find those pit traps in with InfraVision. Yeah. But, okay. All right. We can all stay together. Well, I'm thinking... We can rope you. Yeah. Didn't you have a rope around your way? It sense to just fill this corridor with pit traps. It made sense where we found them. That was a logical spot for you know, a trap. Like this is the corridor. It's not as wide. There could be traps, but and and there probably will be far far yeah, it seems so right. close for it. 
but it's up to you guys. I mean, if you want to go with the rope, that's cool. If you don't want to, if you want to stay all in the light, we can do that too. What do you want to do? I think the bigger hazard is baboons at this point. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I will say though, that once again, it falls to the elder races to watch out for your punk ass human bodies. <laughs> the expendable races. You mean, okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh, <laughs> listen to the pink skin boy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So I think we should go East. And I, I think it's a great idea to have Goran and Mort go first. Yeah. Well, that's where the, the, the foot traffic seemed to go. So. Yeah. Okay. Goran and Mort. And go. let's do the rope thing, John. Let's do the rope thing. So we'll we'll take a hank of 50 feet length of rope, loop it around me, and then loop it around Mort, and then and then 20 feet, 20 or 30 feet between us, guys. I almost 30. feel like it's got to be 30 because of the lantern. Lantern, okay. yeah. Okay. We'll do that. And uh, do you want uh, Yost or Nial? They're both really strong. You do one of them. Yeah, you know, y'all can do it. Y'all will hold on to the rope for you. Okay. Okay. Cool. So it I went, feels like it's a leash now. <laughs> all right. I'm going to say uh, while you're deciding and as leeching the rope that another turn passes. Okay. And you continue to push forward for another 50 feet. All right. As you push forward another 50 feet at this point, okay, it continues on in that direction, but you can hear like there's a subtle change in the air, like the general ambiance, uh, like before it was sort of like an echoing footstep sort of thing, you know, as you, as you kind of moved, but now you can hear like, you can hear what almost sounds like a low roar above you. Constant. The river. The river. Yeah. Or the the waterfall. Waterfall. Okay. Or into wait. the waterfall. Yeah. Is, wait. The waterfall's at the cliff. Is there a waterfall before the cliff? Well, it's probably just the river rushing. By. It's probably just the river. We're, we're about we're about to uh, arrive in the middle of Gosterwick. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's very it's very very dull. It's very very yeah. dull. Very very muted beyond uh, what appears to be sure. lots of rock. But it's definitely above you, and it's just um, it's almost like a. a like I said, it's a change in the ambiance almost more than like suddenly a sound yeah. just appears. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just, right. you know. Does it, does um, it feel more humid here, John? Like are there drips and more so than we've been seeing so far? No, that doesn't appear to be the case. You know, like when you're, you're um, uh, like when an AC kicks on, you can hear it kick on real quickly. It's not like that. But when an AC has been on for a long time, you sort of just lose track to the fact that it's on mm -hmm. and that ambient sound just sort of becomes like the normal dead sound of the air. Even though the AC is on, that's sort of like the, the the sound that you're hearing. You know what I mean? That, that's oh, so the, we're in the air conditioned part of the caves. This yeah, is great. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, continuing on. Yep. Okay. So you press onward for a, another fifty feet, going in that direction, and then a turn goes by. It is now twelve noon up above, and don't mind me. All right. And um, is this accurate, John? The way I drew this. Well, you don't know if it's a river, right? But yeah, you're continuing. Question mark. But like <laughs> I'm saying, after that southwesterly quarter, we went. We've been gone 100 feet. Yep. Yeah. You're and somewhere yeah. around the 50 foot mark. We yes, river. Yes, mark. yes. Yes. Your corridor is correct so oh, far. Okay. All right. It goes uh, another 50 feet as you keep moving forward, and you can see here that now the lantern light blooms northward, as there appears to be a, another natural cavern that goes directly north 90 degrees, while yours um, continues eastward but slightly starts to slope to the southeast by about 10 degrees something like that mm -hmm. you got it okay good all right so it, we're we're walking along the corridor and it's widening out vastly to our left and a little bit to our right not vastly i'm just saying it just the, the lantern light sort of blooms to the north like exposing that there's another tunnel oh it's a tunnel not a cavern mm -hmm. yeah just another tunnel yeah oh i see mm -hmm. Uh, so something probably. like like that. Yep, you got it. And as, as Lizbeth okay. sort of shines her lantern down the north when she discovers it, you can see that after about 30 feet or so, the ground starts to slowly slope away into darkness, like it dips below Does her it, lantern light. Oh, so it dips oh. down? So it slopes down? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, at, as you're standing there, okay, nothing seems to have changed at all. The sound of... The roaring above you slowly starts to fade away at the at where you are now, um, but it's replaced as, as we move, right? Not as you're moving forward. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, 
And so everything's sort of really quiet now. And as you're kind of standing in this intersection, you can hear to the north. All you can tell is that it's coming from the north, but you can hear slight whisperings, like the echoes of of what appear to be voices, just like coming from the north. Multiple voices, you can't really tell because it's so shapeless and it's non-directional, right? It's just like, definitely like the remnants of echoes, but you can definitely hear what appears to be voices whispering. Does it sound like goblins? Very tough to tell. All you can tell, it's definitely okay. like sentient voices speaking <laughs> in some sort of language. <laughs> Does it sound like the voices in Arwen's head? <laughs> or on her head? Okay. Uh, I, I, guys, do you think it's worth like s sending a sneaky, sneaky person up there? I mean, because if, yes. if we go up with the, the lantern, we're going to like broadcast. Yeah. Game over. Down for it. All right. You're going to go first, dude. You're sneakier than I am. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go sneak. I move silent three and six. I'll do that. I will move silently. So, so let's slide me like 15 feet back on the rope so that you can go 15 feet ahead of me. All right. Is so it'll be him going first, me 15 feet back, and then another 15 feet back for the rest of the party. Yeah. And if we can, I don't, I don't know if it's possible to shutter the bullseye lantern so much, but like minimize it. So it's just shining down here. Like I don't want to project forward. Okay, so yeah, you can any any light in this darkness is going to be a pinpoint, right? Mm -hmm. It can be seen by anyone who can see light. So the only way that you, if you yourself want to be able to see, you will have to remain behind. Uh, right, because it's not well, just about can... my vision; it's about not being seen. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. yeah. Um, I think I think we got to stay back. I think that it's a it's a. Fine. It'll it'll definitely draw their attention if we if we show up there. So we'll we'll just wait and listen, I guess. Okay, so yeah. it's, it's more than there's 15 feet of rope and then Gorned. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. 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 Maybe actually, if we're worried about traps or something, maybe Gorin should just hold rope that's tied to Mort. Uh, I'm not maybe. that strong, bro. <laughs> I hate well, to say it, well, but yeah. All right, fine. Mort, then Gorned, and then anybody else coming? No. No. Uh, Okay. Dark, no dark vision crew, dark. I think, is the only, yeah. Okay. Humies are going to stay back. Mort, you, oh, very careful, you very carefully move forward. Gorn has uh, very little ability to hide, to, to be silent, but Mort, you have a chance, so go ahead and roll. Okay. Let's go to the old die roller here. Roll us up uh, three. Okay, that is cool. a silent move. Gorn, go ahead and roll the d6 for me. Okay. What does he need a one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, or like okay. but I'm hoping that I'm I'm far enough back where I'm not really a sector. Oh God! Okay, you're 15 it's feet almost, back though, right? That's what you one. said. Yeah. Can't take the yeah. dwarf anywhere. Yeah. Farther back behind Mort. Okay, so in darkness, using only your infravision, Mort and Gorin crawl forward very, very slowly. You move 50 yeah. feet in that direction. Okay. Okay. Um, you oop, 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 oop. you. Stop after 50 feet because Mort, your infravision pings at the very far limit. So we're going it, to, it's a 60 foot infravision, but we'll just call it a square, right? So at the top of the next square, your infravision pings. So here. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And you, you can see two, sh first of all, you see like a, like a heat signature of some sort. And then as it kind of gets a little bit closer, it separates out into two, one very small about your size and one about Yost's size. Right. As it's at the same time, you can, uh, the, the voices start to see that there's, they actually weren't whispering. They were just sort of having like a quiet conversation, but it was just echoing down the halls and, and, uh, dissipating. And so it became like a whisper, but you can hear two male voices. One's relatively high pitched. One is low and they are both male and they appear to be arguing in Arkantian. And, uh, you could, <laughs> you can immediately peg one as halfling. Is it Jenks and Hicksonius? And one is human. You're once again you're seeing heat signatures only, but uh, you could hear um, there. So like you hear one of them goes, uh, "That my man, fucking Roger, that fucking guy who made him the leader. He sends us down here like this in these dang goddamn tunnels, and." Jeez, we're looking for what this wind guy who the fuck is the wind just because we saw some goddamn note and he sent us down here oh god 
oh my god we have to paint a big w where these guys are black. <laughs> that's, that's, that's very funny i love it um is it okay. and you can hear them they're they're coming towards you but they're moving very very slowly you can see the heat signatures that they have their weapons out uh, uh, the small guy is carrying a short sword and the big guy is wielding a battle axe. Um, and they're mm -hmm. moving very, very cautiously, sort of in the same manner that you are. They also have a, um, uh, Jenks appears to be carrying in his other hand, a, a torch, um, which is probably the first thing that you would have right. seen bloom. Uh, and hold on a second. So, yeah, so, so you see, uh, uh, the the big guy uh i don't i don't have a voice for this guy so i'm not even going to bother trying but uh, he um he says i he, he goes i think the yeah i think the whole goddamn thing's horseshit if you ask me gives uh we all everybody knows that chronos gives access to his favorites down to his secret little entrance down here we shouldn't even be in this part everyone oh david I told if, you if, fucking told you motherfuckers <laughs> we're, not, we're not supposed to be here we and jinx and and then the other the obviously it's jenkins to uh, hicksonius right so jenks is like i know but i found this secret entrance over here we i had to, we have to go check it out right this could be the wind if if there, no one else knew about this particular like little crevice that we found He's like, I know, but I don't, I don't like the, I don't like the looks of this. Everyone comes down here. Everyone knows they go down to the east and they go down that long, long passageway down, down, down. We're just asking for trouble going into uncharted territory. Well, this is what we're being paid for. And they're get they're get, starting to get closer. So they're about 50 feet away and their torch is going to illuminate you um, when they move about 20 feet closer. Um, so I, at this point, uh i assume goran can also see and hear this um yeah okay but he can also see me because i'm probably showing up in his infravision and i want to sort of motion to move back and i'm going to start backing up i want to keep an eye on them because if they turn off into whatever crevice one of them just mentioned i want to see where they go otherwise i say we let them uh, surprise the whole group of us at the intersection. And then we have a little convo. Okay, so you're backing up. I am backing up, keeping an eye on them, trying to stay out of their torchlight, but okay. watching them. All right. I, so... uh, well, I don't know anything that's going on yet. So yeah, yeah, you guys don't know this yet, yeah. but, but Goran should see me backing up and should start backing up also. Yep. Okay. So you guys will figure out something's up pretty soon. Okay, so... We'll say that you're you're moving back at least a little bit faster than they are moving forward, so that you can gain some distance, I assume. Right. And um, so you you back up and you find yourself back at the at the at the intersection with the rest of the group. Where I think we should just sort of back up just slightly to the west and wait for them to come out of the intersection. Why? Yeah. What, so what, we can parlay or kill. We decide on the spot. I, I guess. Mean, you can't kill them, dude. What are you like? Well, those are the two options. What What do you want to do? Run we, away? We could we yes. could just keep going Continue east. They don't, on. they don't want to go east. We just keep going you, east. You, you resist the bait. No, but they're, you talking resist about, the bait. they're talking about a crevice. I want to know where this crevice is. They've got a secret entrance that one of them wants to go in and the other one doesn't. No, no, no. You misheard. So it looks like Jenks. Oh. What you're gathering is that Jenks found a secret crevice near where they, wherever they debouched from the, from the inn. Okay, and then and they were exploring that. When, now they're when, in that. When normally oh. the path the pathway for favored guests of Kronos leads directly east from the debouche. I see. So they're in they uncharted in the they're okay. in uncharted territory. They both don't like being here, but Jenks has a feeling that if the wind is real, that maybe the wind took like this secret pathway. So they're gonna check that out because why you know, everyone basically knows about the path to the east. Yeah, not everyone. I mean, <laughs> so basically, this is the path to the south that is, you know, verboten. It is verboten, or, verboten, <laughs> or, or yeah. it, it was just exposed by Jenks. Like Jenks apparently found this secret path right. south. Right. Okay. okay. With that in mind, I think you're right. We should just go east. That makes sense. Do Let's we, just stay ahead of them. If, if you guys tell us, if, do we want to make a W down here or not? I mean. <laughs> We could do it. That that might just get more attention down here. Honestly, I don't know if your little, you know, 
uh, spirit of the perverse that you got from Laryl can actually resist making the <laughs> Do you really have a choice in this? Uh, okay. I, I, you know what? Why don't I do this? Instead of taking the time to paint a W, um, I'm going to reach into the bag and pull out some drafts of the note that he stuck on the door with the with the dagger like with some misspellings so and... they, let me stop you there that's a little too complex right it's just a mundane okay, okay. just a mundane item right like it can't be Here something that's pull, yeah pull out an embroidered w like torn from a cape or like a uh, like a handkerchief or a handkerchief perfect yeah yeah yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. okay i'm gonna I'll, I'll i'll do that i'm gonna put uh get a pull, reach in and pull out a, a handkerchief with a, a an embroidered w okay. that mimics the the shape of the w that we i've been painting Okay. Please blow and, your nose on it first. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I blew I blew my nose on it. And then and wait, can I pull like, one soiled out so I don't have to do that? Sure. What yeah, do you okay. What do you want to do with it? <laughs> like slightly um, bury it in the like so it's as if it's gotten dropped and like scuffed on, not like freshly planted, but if it's been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, like drop it and just kind of step on it a little bit. Yeah. Where Where are you trying to draw them to? Like, what's the point? Like, they find the handkerchief, then what? Oh, send them, um, send them west. Do we? Do no, we that's want, back towards our we, area. Good guys, because uh, I don't, I don't want, I don't. It's fine. Do we <laughs> actually want a fucking army of people down in these tunnels? No. Do you, I mean, like, do, yeah. do we want? Do we want to? If we kill Garalad and we come running back this way, do we want to meet a troop of people? Is that what we want for ourselves? Mischief or not? Oh, but we're I'm also just not just going to murder there. these guys, David. No, I didn't say we murder them. I said okay. we just leave. I'm saying, I'm saying, do we want to draw if they confirm their suspicion and they go back and they have they have proof to everyone at the broken head that he's down here, arms to back. the teeth, mercenary company adventurers and innkeeper who's been lying to us this entire time about his multiple egresses into the dungeon <laughs> to send a kill squad down here and find us. <laughs> You know, like, do we do we really want that? <laughs> I, I won't say what we should do, but I'm just going to ask that open question. <laughs> really I mean, I, honestly, I'm a little worried about that as well. I'm hesitant on this whole thing. Shoot, we could just make like a little mark, uh, like a like a skull or something, and point west on the wall. Or we could just leave. Or yeah. we could just leave. leave if you can resist the urge to follow Laryl's spirit. Yeah. I, I really leave. love this whole idea of the spirit of the perverse here that Matt is dealing with. I think that's the most apt description. It is amazing. It is amazing. Let's go. Are, are you going to quell it, Matt, for this time, or are you uh, going, or are you going to indulge? I'll quell. I'm keeping. I'm keeping the hanky though. I got the hanky out. Could be handy. Okay. It could so, be handy. Well, here's the deal. It but I listen to. I listen to my pal. Okay. So it appears that Hixonius and Jenks are moving at about the same rate as you are, very carefully, with the same amount of same amount of encumbrance. So if you move at the same rate. They will not be able to catch up to you. However, if anything slows you down, slows you down, they will quickly catch up. And as well, because the distance is not that far, if there is any, like any sort of loud wow. sound, like you guys can talk to each other, that's fine, that right. sort of thing. But shrieker, more ferrets, any any sort of battle that's going to immediately alert them that there is something going on. Okay, mm -hmm. um, it is also likely that they will probably hear faint squeaking from the ferret back along the quarter once they reach that intersection okay that said you guys are going to continue east and i just want to know why we don't just kill them yeah well that's just yost is pure of mind and thought um <laughs> look on uh, <laughs> would love to kill them as well it would be too i mean i resisted this urge but it would be too fewer competition listen i also <laughs> remind you too that once again <laughs> I fear that I've given you the wrong <laughs> impression of the five fingers of destiny. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, um, that's why uh, we're continue. resisting the killing part. All right, yeah, so you're going to try. You're going to try to stay ahead of these guys and be as quiet as possible and leave them to their own devices. And I think this is a good point for us to go pee and grab a beer. Oh, uh, we will be yeah. right back after these messages. Okay, we're back. What's the plan? All right, going to the bathroom is very uh, good for the creative juices, shall we say? And I had an idea. <laughs> So Mort is going to shut up, Mike. <laughs> Mort's going to jump up on Yost's shoulders, and they're going to have their arms out and their weapons out, 
and someone with the lantern is going to light them from sort of, you know, back and below to make them look really big shadows on the wall of the tunnel where uh, Jenks and Hixonius will see it. And then, you know, Yost will start making big scary noises. And then uh, I want um, Mort to start cursing. And the only language he knows that isn't Arkantian is Kumus. So it just sounds exotic, I think. And he's just going to start cussing and, and I will slay you and I will eat your eyes and other phrases like that. And they're going to wave their arms and sort of make a lot of noise and <laughs> scrape their arms down the rock wall. Okay. Just try to scare the crap out of Jinx and his Sony. His okay. Time, oh my God. As and time there goes- will be no survivors. <laughs> That's right. We're going to go full Holocaust cloak, John. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, one turn passed as you were backtracking Ridiculous. backwards quietly and discussing yeah. your plans. Um, yeah. Then you're going to do this ruse. Okay. Um, I don't think it's it'll clever be clever ruse. I don't think yeah. it'll take a turn to get yourself up on top of Yost and get yeah. it all worked out. Um, but you do have to wait for them. Are you going to move back up into the corridor or are you going to wait for them to kind of come into this intersection? Um, we can move what? up a little bit. If It's better if they don't actually see that there's an intersection. Yeah, like we wow. want to just start like, you know, projecting okay. and have them come to the projection. Right? Okay, right. cool. All right. I think we need to call this the Dread Pirate Roberts maneuver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to say it's going to take another turn for you to get kind of in position and to wait for them to sort of come down, right? Uh, so right. you want to do it so like there's a 50-foot distance between the two of you before you sort of let loose with your little thing. Is it like Roughly. kind of like at that right at that Y intersection so we're like projecting onto the... I thought not. I thought yeah, you were moving up into the Yeah, projecting onto the, the, the tunnel where they'll see it, the tunnel that they're in. That wall should, they yeah, should be able yeah. to see my big shadow. Okay. okay. When you were in position... Uh, Elizabeth's lantern goes out. Mother. <laughs> we, we light it again. We got the stuff. We got. Oh my we god. We light it again. <laughs> okay. Sooner or later, guys, we got to start checking that lantern oil level. I'm spirit of the perverse surprise. Again. Okay, so uh, I need whoever's got the lantern oil to mark another one off. I get it. I just did. <laughs> Uh, one, two, three, four, minus four. So right here Liz, is, uh, so who's carrying the lantern right now? Elizabeth is, yeah. Elizabeth. Okay, so Elizabeth is up there, part of your ruse then, I assume. Well, she's she like back, be, b- back behind, yeah. She needs okay. to be far enough behind that there's a wide cast of light across Yost and Mort. Gotcha. And she's holding yeah, the lantern like down the low. But, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So you do it. So you're like, and you make scary sounds and like the, the, you know, your little shadow play against the wall and it scatters up and, and you can hear, uh, you, you, all of you can hear, uh, Hixonius and Jenks sort of carrying on this conversation. They're grumbling and they're, they're getting more and more irritated and afraid because they don't like the looks of it. They've seen no sign of this wind. And, um, and then you hear them like they both go fuck at the same exact same time as, <laughs> um, and you can hear shink as they pull out their weapons and, uh, and embrace themselves. And they're like, what the fuck is that? Do you see that? Um, and everything is, gets really quiet and you can only hear more doing his. <laughs> and then Yost should go as loud as he can. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them make a reaction. Grab I'm, I'm going to I'm going to have them make a reaction roll. They are seasoned, hardy adventurers, around on par with you guys. Um, they may not be intimidated by this. They're they're wary. They were definitely frightened. But will they turn tail? Doubtful. So we John, would. can I just can I just John can I just remind you no, we would. that I. I'm all the way down at that intersection, well south of the gotcha. rest of these fellows. Okay. Sure. Yeah. They don't they yeah. don't want to die. They 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 are in dangerous territory. There's only two of them. They do not have a full party. They also do want to survive. Um, but I'm saying, are they mm-hmm. terrified um of thing of something that they have not seen yet? Who knows? All right. So uh I if need they, if they start running at us like as a charging, like a screaming to attack. I want Morton Yost to just start laughing and be like, "Oh man, you should have seen your faces." Uh huh. <laughs> okay, we'll so just play it that way. It's I'm going to do it on a two d six scale, but it's not really a reaction roll. This is what, how, how I'm going to call it. Okay, you know it's a okay. bell curve. All right, so this is what I'm going to say. Yeah. Um, uh, one one to five is they are a one to one to five on a two d six. 
Huh? I'm two sorry. To five. Yeah, I'm sorry. Two to five on a 2d6 roll is they are going to say, fuck that thing, and I we're going to go kill it. Um, uh, oh. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> six to nine. Six to nine, they are going to be, which is like the most, what's most likely to be rolled. They are going to be uh, cautious. Caution is a better part of valor. They're going to be like, uh, nope. And they're going to very carefully walk back the way that they came. Uh, 10 to 12, they are going to be completely terrified and they're going to run pell-mell as fast as they possibly can. All right. So you're rolling high. You're rolling okay. high. Roll high. All right. Yeah. And I would like to pray to Laryl very quickly uh, for... Yeah. Does that seem uh, fair oh, to I'm you guys? Does that seem fair to you? And I'm asking you is yeah, yeah. yeah okay. um, absolutely. All right. Yeah, I think that's three fair outcomes. Yeah. Do you want okay. me to roll this, John? Sure, go for it. Roll high, okay. roll high, roll high. Now we're roll high. now we're screwed. Thanks for your confidence. Eight. Eight. Okay. All right. So uh you see things get really, really quiet. And as you're still like spooky, you just you don't hear anything. Yes. And as they get farther away, we'll just let our get quiet so they think we're going the other direction. It just becomes like deathly quiet, like just nothing. You don't hear the whispers, nothing. We're, yes. we're And we're good as long as they don't come back with a team of meddling kids. No. <laughs> okay. We do them. Oh. All right. So a, we'll say that little ruse uh, cost a turn. Well done. Worth it. Are we out of lantern oh, oil again? This <laughs> is one turn. It's just one turn out of 24. You're fine. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. You drop back down Onward. off of Yost's shoulders. Yost is like, oh, that was <laughs> that was very enjoyable. I liked it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Mort will go up to Onwer and say, I'm sorry. I had to do it. You're right. <laughs> you need to be more careful. No more hijinks. I take this very seriously. I want you to know that. <laughs> Yost is like, Yost is like, he goes, Mort, you don't, you don't have to apologize. And he slaps Onwer on the back. He's like, Onwer, it's okay. It's just a little whimsy. And um, I'll, uh, I'll, give, I'll give you a <laughs> little tweak on his on his right nip since he never wears a shirt. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I love whimsy, Yos. You know, I love whimsy. <laughs> now, careful there, man. That's consent. Jeez. Who's the leader around here? Are we going or what? Yeah, yeah let's, let's go. do it. Let's okay. do it. Hey, okay, let's go. All right, east. Con continuing on. Oh, hold on a second. Don't mind me. I think Are we going to do up. our um? Uh, Dark vision guys in front, or are we all going yep, together? Let's do it. Okay. Dark vision guys in front. Okay, so it winds its way through a number of small little turns, but in general, it starts, it goes uh, southeast and it goes at about a 45 degree angle at this point, and it continues on and on and on. 45 for, south, uh, east, southeast, east? southeast, yeah. yeah. Um, on and on and on for about 350 feet, which is Ow. seven squares. Don't Any mind me while I do something that is totally not anything to worry about. John, is it going up or down in elevation? It is a straight level. Okay. Okay. So just like this, John, is this? Yep. In general, you got it right. Yep. Okay. Shift that's a long ass tunnel. Yeah. At which point you find yourself at the top of a cliff that goes down 15 feet and opens up onto a wide, roughly uh, 100 feet east to west, 50 feet north to south, rough stone chamber. Okay, 100 feet east to west, 50 feet north to south. Mm -hmm. Something like uh, this. And yeah, John, you, was that? Yeah, uh, you can you can hold turn? you can hold to the square lines, Ted. It's easier that way. Okay, you know what I mean. Was that three three yeah. turns in the in the three turns? Line? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and do we oh, no, enter not, this? Not, not three turns. I'm sorry. It's seven turns. Oh, okay, One, two, three. Do we enter this like at the very end of this corridor and the top of the corridor? Like this this room? I mean, uh, like you're coming in. You're coming in from the northwestern side of it, and there's a twenty. There's a fifteen foot drop to the cavern floor floor below. So I should probably do something like. That's fine, yeah. Like I said, doesn't it like, too too exact? I, I just think it's easier for you to sort of like hew as close as you can to the squares, just to make it easier. So something like that, then. Uh huh. You got it. Okay. All right. Um, 
It's not what I expected. So here, um, as you start to approach this cliff, the stone itself actually starts to change into like a really beautiful sort of flow stone, right? Like it's less rough and more smooth in general. And then this entire cave here is flow stone itself. Um, and it's forming like irregular ledges all around. Um, there is some interesting stuff here that is illuminated by Elizabeth's lantern, like looking down. First of all, uh, entrances and exits. So there is a, another cliff directly to the Southwest, about 25 feet along the Southwestern wall leading directly West. However, that cliff is 25 feet up. So it's above you, right? Right, right here. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. While we're uh, mapping, I'm going to go put that kid to bed and I'll be right back. Sure. That kid. So that's 25, 25, feet, that's 25 off. feet off the ground. So it's about 10 feet above the level where you are at right now. You understand? Uh -huh. This is yep. sort of similar to like that, that, that exit way out to the Northwest where you were. Um, and in addition, there is a, uh, corridor that goes, uh, that, that heads Southeast from the middle of the cavern at about a 45 degree angle as well. And it sort of slopes down and out of view. And it's basically right at the edge of Elizabeth's lantern light anyway. So you can barely see that, that leading outwards. Okay. About now, there. Yeah, you got it now, but there are some signs of habitation in this room. Although there are no living beings, Ooh. Gorn and Mort, your infravision does not ping. Um, it is completely dark except for Elizabeth's lantern. There is, uh, let me just see where it is exactly. Yeah. It's a so nest, isn't it? At the base of the larger cliff, the one that you're not on. All right. So at the bottom of the 25 feet, uh, at the 25 foot cliff, there is yeah. a four foot tall marble statue. It, it It's beaming in the light of, of Elizabeth's lantern, uh, hmm. it, white marble, a statue of a whippet, like the dog, like a little miniature greyhound, right? And, dee 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 dee. and there is also a right next to it, a five foot tall. So one foot tall, uh, uh, one foot taller statue, a bronze statue of what you definitely can't mistake for anything else, but the God Taw, P T A H. Oh, Taw. Yes. yes. Taw. That's, uh, that's also leaning against the wall. Um, it looks like both of those statues do show signs of having like of uh, ambient moisture and tarnish as well. They are not perfect in any way, shape, or form. Um, and at their feet, you can see the de decomposed remains of what looks to be uh, like a wooden crate, like 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 wood just sort of disintegrating and, and decomposing. Um, and, okay. And uh, you, uh, in the lantern light as well, you can see that there's something is glinting every once in a while amidst those pieces of mm. the crate in front of those statues. So that four foot tall marble statue would be very useful if a problem comes along because you must whip it. <laughs> nice. <t> <laughs> well, I liked I, it. I, I, I don't know why no one else is laughing, but I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> well, I, was pretty good. I just don't have any context. <laughs> that's even my funny bone. I don't know why, but it <laughs> <laughs> that's all right man, your ace your ace is in my book ted <laughs> thank you john um is that all we see in the room or at least in our torchlight or yeah torchlight, you, um because you're looking for it i'll also say too that it is uh definitely evident that the vast majority of the at least remember it's only illuminating basically like the first 50 feet like the western yeah. half of the room um but that that generally seems clear of um any natural scree as well looks like there has been traffic through here quite a bit actually and you said this room was worked stone. This was like an a like built a built room. No, no, it's like flow stone, right? It just seems to be like a different sort of stone. Oh, that's right. You said flow stone. Yeah, uh, but it's still it's still very much natural. It's just that it forms like sort of like these really irregular, beautiful ledges every everywhere. In other words, it would be very easy to climb. You um, non thieves right. would have a much higher would probably have like more right. like a two and six chance to to crawl along the walls than than okay. you know, normal. Okay. Um, so, so it's 50, you're 15 feet up. That's, yep. uh, yeah, it is not possible to jump down without hurting yourself. You would, you do have to figure out a means. 
I gotta say, wall, but like you said, there are handholds. We could no handholds in this them. one, unfortunately. I mean, I, I mean, the, but in the flowstone, you said that it was. Oh yeah, there are natural. There are natural places. Down. Yes, but That's it's what I yeah. but it's you still have to roll. Okay. I I mean I'm not 100 percent sure where we're lining up. You know, versus our maps of Plunger Town and and the the. Uh, well, this definitely looks like we have crossed underneath the river. Right. right. So we're at least on the we're right side the of the bottom. river, I think. But I gotta say, I feel like at this point we're pretty well south of where. Do you want me, you want me to bring? Do you want me to bring up the Ruin City map, please? Because I think I, I wouldn't I be a bad idea. Because really. okay. if we think the workshop is the the laboratory with the potion machine, yeah, which is I think a very reasonable assumption. The access to that was directly under Isocritus's little uh, thing we have marked on that map there. Um, I put it this way: if we know, if we know for a fact, sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. Well, I was just say I feel like I'm guessing, right? But I feel like we're probably more down here now. You know, you know what I think, Ted? I think that we're we might be somewhere over in here. We know Ooh, for maybe. a fact. We know for a fact that Kronos has an access point directly from the end, and that they came via some distance in a second second way, but uh uh. uh to oh. where where we encountered them from that space. Right. So if we went under the river and encountered them with any proximity to the inn, that would place us somewhere, yeah, in that uh, area. Perhaps. And don't forget too yeah, that, yeah, that, that that this can you guys see that? Yeah. 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 So this is like south. Right. Right. Yeah. So right. just oh, just so remember we... just remember the cardinal directions oh. are a little bit skewed. I forgot about so, that. Yeah. So then, guys, we are we might be closer to that ISO's entrance than we think. You're right. I think yep. yeah. I think we're I think we're somewhere in this zone. I I agree because if they went south sure. and the river crossed, then yeah, probably I think, somewhere I think, around there. Yeah. I think if we cross under the river right. again, we'll hear that sound again. So a good indication that we've gone astray, at least, yeah. you know south westward is 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 by hearing that again right now well, also so, yeah, like i was just going to ask when we were looking we haven't been able to see the eastern side of this room very well like we don't know whether right. or not there's an exit over on that side of the room right? exactly but the reason i bring this up my point being that like um uh you we know that the you know the n parentheses o w parentheses workshop right that there's some misdirection there we don't know that the workshop is necessarily accurate either uh i i'm just bringing it up because i'm trying to like position against where we know you know isocritus's entrance was etc cetera, etc cetera, to determine do we really want to go down this or are we like way off base here because that's a long corridor it just seemed like a good time to think about it but i think matt you made and, and david you guys made a pretty good uh argument pointing out like yeah, uh, Jenks and Nixonius came straight south, and right around there we had the river cross. So yeah, it does look like we might be actually kind of in the right spot. It's it's. I think it's a valid concern. I think uh, uh, we'll hear that if we're. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a valid thing. We should keep searching. My bigger yeah. worry at this point is we're going to find our way all the way to this workshop, and it will be the lab, which means it's bricked up. And we don't have a way of entering into Plunger Town. Well, but no, hopefully no, I mean, there are alternatives. The, no, no, it's only the bricked up they, to go to the surface. Yeah, they only collapsed the secret entrance to the lab. They didn't collapse anything there. I thought Krynos was still alive. Up with one of those tunnels yeah. that we never went down. I thought they collapsed the the entrance we to Plunger Town from the lab. Frankly, the, they don't know what the lab. to the lab. Yes, you're, yeah. you're right about that, David, yeah. I'm right, which means we can't get into it. From there, why would they? Um, why would they block the lab when I was blocking the lab? That's what John said they did. I doesn't matter why. I thought you said that they they were going to collapse the secret entrance. That's correct. No, oh, yeah, yeah, the the secret. There's a whole whole set of tunnels just to the south of that, guys. Yeah, that we never explored. I know. Yeah, so what and that's that's where it's going to link up. What Garlad ordered Cisco to do was to take some goblins and destroy, block up the 
the secret entrance that led into the lab on the lab's level not not all the way up the tunnel to where right. it actually exits yeah, yeah, out yeah, into yeah. the city ruins but like right so, there at the entrance of the lab and block that so up. so we are hoping for what you guys you guys are saying is that we come in where that like weird book was right. south yeah, of the lab yeah, something rather like than north yeah. of the lab and then blocked from entering yeah yeah yes i got you yeah because okay. that that was a, that secret entrance was just a stairwell and there was no other way there into was it. Right, but right, well, to John, I tie a rope around my waist and I just jump over the side of this 15 feet. I'm trying to get south of there. there was a, I know bit of a, a tunnel that went underneath. Remember, yeah. there was like the tunnel we went down to and lost Trusty, and then right below that one, there was yeah. another tunnel that we said go down a flight of stairs, and we do, were baboons. Do down you want me to bring too. up the level? Do you want me to bring up that map? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mort pulls out his scroll of that level and unrolls it. Okay, for everyone, okay. look at. It. Give me one moment. Uh, let's see. There's the one. One moment, please. Reticulating splines. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful map. Right. Ooh, I just got that map. Who who made this? What? Oh my god! Look at that bad boy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so All what right. we know for sure is okay. Secret instance is collapsed. This area, right? right? Well, I don't know how to do it. So this, whoops, man, this bit. Oh, what the hell is wrong with my? It might be lagging. My pointer's there's... not working. Hmm. Well, suffice to say, there are multiple points of egress here, then we don't know where they may or may not lead. So, in all huh. probability, in all probability, the 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 westmost entrance would be the one we'd come through. Yeah. Because I think I think I think the southern one just reconnects to where Squeegee died. Probably. I yeah, can't probably. be certain. Although. So so I that would mean. I can't imagine Garalad's going through that room with the evil book because that gate, I think, looked like it had never been opened or not it's, recently. It's the staircase that we never explored down to the yeah. south of that room. I don't know how to do the little marker thing, but right. mine's not yeah. even working. It's the tear. Yeah, mine's it's, not working. It's the teardrop. Yeah, my teardrop's yeah, not working. Also, yeah, but I, I think I think yeah. it is like I, I. It's my my personal theory. I think that the column where Squeegee died is at that far east like those those co those uh tunnels where we are the the or the halls where we actually had that battle i think through those doorways i think those are the doorways that connect all the way over there but but yeah i i'm kind of with mike i think that we're gonna either come in if this is true like we'll either come in up those stairs or we'll come in from that hallway to the south i don't think it's that weird um that uh that weird room that you were naked in because that room was like really undisturbed and there were yeah. like piles yeah. of dead people and yeah. 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 And we heard right, baboons well, down that staircase. We heard well, that. We, oh, yeah. Well, all right. Well, let's let's get back to it then. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. So we agree that we should keep going down this corridor. Is that the yeah, upshot yeah, of all yeah. right? Okay, great. Let's keep going. Okay. okay. Did, while I was out, did you guys see anything uh to worry about? Because we've been attacked by statues before. Not we did not see worrisome statues. It's a four foot statue of a whippet and a five foot uh, sorry, that's made of marble and a five foot bronze statue of Ta, mm -hmm. uh, as in Tem and Ta. And uh, they're both have evidence of water damage. And then there is the rotted and collapsed remains of a glinting something amidst the ru ruins of, of a chest or a box of some sort yeah, great in story. front of the statues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So what's the plan? You're 15 feet up. What do you do? I tie um, a rope around my waist and I go over the side. All right, let's let onward go first. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> onward, so you're just, are you holding this rope? What are you doing with the other end? <laughs> the other end did you guys have. Why not? You know, oh, you guys got oh. me, right? Were we supposed to grab that? Okay. <laughs> we Sorry. see the, the rope. Just, just... Okay. You're tied around, <laughs> yeah, David. We'll you, you go down. down, and you are able to lower yourself down without issue. Uh, I'll right. say it doesn't even take a turn, although it depends on what you do next. So you're down in the ground. Nothing jumps out and scares you or anything like that. However, you That's are cool. still dependent upon Lisbeth's lantern up at the top of the cliff. Yeah. So, uh, so um, I'll, I'll ask you all to uh, help uh, both me and Lisbeth kind of down so that we have light down there. Okay, cool. So uh, I assume everyone goes down. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Every, yeah. Everyone hops down. That'll say, we'll say, take it's a turn. Uh, okay. Elizabeth is able to uh, basically shed a light around the entire chamber. It is exactly as described. There does not appear to be any other exits, and there does not appear to be any other signs of habitation other than what is against the base of that 25-foot cliff on the west. However, you can see that um, the, so the 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 Gorin can actually pinpoint for you that there the um, 
cleared area does appear to be mostly centered on a direct path coming from the southern entrance directly to where you guys have dropped down from. Okay, suggesting that's the traffic pattern to keep going in the same direction we've been going. That appears to be the case. I'm that going to run over there and look at it. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I can tell David's like, <laughs> let's get this shit on the road. <laughs> All right. uh, no, I get it. I, I feel you. Okay, so David, um, as you go over there, we'll say Elizabeth <clears throat> follows you over. She shines the light down. It goes 50 feet downwards, uh, uh, generally sloping downwards, and then continues into darkness beyond it Then in that same vector. It's a uh, flowstone, natural. It does not appear to be um, any sign. Uh, uh, sorry, does not appear to be signs of scree in the center of the path. So in my mind's eye, John, when you say flowstone, I think about like lot like melted stone that that froze or that solidified. Yeah, I suppose that... so. I'm reading off the description. I'm not. I'm not a, a I mean, geologist, that, so I'm not stone. exactly okay. sure what flowstone is, but I picture it as some sort of igneous stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Well, let's, let's, let's... is sheet like deposits of calcite or other carbonate minerals formed where water flows down the walls or along the floors of a cave. That tracks. That so I eat close to the river. It's yeah, it's like there's water dripping down and it's leaving deposits. It, you get that ropes. It looks like the long ropey floopy stone gotcha, you get inside gotcha, gotcha. Some caves. Oh, right. oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Right. It does not sure. see it does not appear that any anyone moving through the chamber has decided to approach the uh the the broken wooden crate or the statues against right. the western wall. Which is a I bit worrying. Like to investigate those. Go are on, you you're sure? going to we, we could just we could just keep going. What would Onweir do? Can we take mm. a turn just to pick through the crate until it explodes? Sure. sure. Gorn, you, you want you can go over there by yourself. Yeah, you man. Want, I'm gonna okay. shields up and I'm gonna poke it with my uh, spear and see if okay. anything pops out. Yeah, don't mind. Honestly, me. Mort would totally go along with that. Mort loves treasure. Okay, so as the two of the Infravision guys kind of poke through the detritus, you can sift through it. You can see what, that was, what was shining Elizabeth's lantern at the top of the cliff was actually a few pieces of gold. And much to your delight, it's not just pieces of gold. Ooh. They're ancient gold solidi, which means they're 10 times more valuable than normal gold. All right, I oh was wrong. Goodness. You guys are right. <laughs> Uh, now you're going to die by some kind of horrible monster. So there now it, 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 all treasure is going to pale in comparison to the vault. <laughs> so <laughs> don't get don't get all uh, you know that's disappointed. But um, uh, there are five ancient gold solidi. So that would be uh, five pieces of gold. So that would actually be fifty uh, GP value, right? That's not not nothing. Mm -hmm. and, okay, and they are all ten times as heavy. So that would be. Um, 50 coins worth right so actually still wouldn't take a, a slot. slot yeah it would yeah. not be a slot yeah yeah um would you like to carry that goran since you found it yeah all right um both the statue of the whippet and the statue of Taw look to be you know like two 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 man sort of carry sort of things you know what i mean neither of them is yeah. small enough to fit into Laryl's sack unfortunately but they do appear to be quite valuable you think that the whippet would probably fetch about 200 gold on the market, and the statue of Taw would fetch about four hundred and fifty. All right, biggest change. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oop, uh, and X and e, four fifty. You say? Mm -hmm. And it now the clock. You hear the clock up above strike two p.m. Dong, <laughs> dong. Okay, and so these we are leaving behind, but I'll make a note of them in case we decide we want to. Who took the soul die? Me. Gorin right. has it. Okay, very good. Do you decide to try to shimmy up the twenty-five feet up the flowstone to the cliff above, or are you going to continue to the southeast, or just pack it up and go back home? I think southeast, right? Well, what would cause Onward to have an aneurysm? <laughs> no southeast for sure <laughs> you're muted dude in all probability the way up is right above that 25 foot cliff but uh <laughs> well we could always try and scarper that way if we have to come back this way we yeah, go and, and, and again we don't want to go up we want to you know we want to find our way we want to find, find our way okay find 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 g and kill him okay um so can we 
just in case if if we can like retrieve that solid eye without making it look too obvious we went through that pile of crap there in case someone does come by here and go hey wait a minute someone move my my crate stuff you know what i mean like sure my discarded pile of trash sure yeah what are you gonna do with it i'm sorry ted well the idea is like why would Gar- a girl ad walk through here and not pick up five solid eye right maybe it's there as a as a tip that someone's gone through the room oh i found five solid eye so if we can make the pile look like it's undisturbed oh okay yeah okay that's fine um, why don't you put uh five like regular gold coins there maybe they shrunk that's just crazy are why you, would i do that no i'm doing not doing that okay all right. <laughs> okay all right uh, it, won't ta- is full on sprinting it was already a messy pile so it doesn't take a turn to actually put it back that's fine okay. you heading southeast now yeah. yes and this is sloping down you said yeah so it begins to slope down um almost immediately at a at, a, at an angle um, is someone clicking a pen or something? Uh, sorry, that's Be me. Awesome. Yeah, just be careful. Just picking it up. All right, so you you start to move southeast. And after about, let's see, uh, about 150 feet, it turns to be directly south, so 90 degrees, after about three squares, okay? And let's see, give me a sec. Okay. At this point... It starts to uh, go sharply, not sharply, but much more steeply downwards. All right. And it goes down for another 200 feet directly south. Okay. Oh my God, this down, place is huge. Down, down, down. So 200 <clears throat> feet is one, two, three, four squares down to the south. Okay. And Sean, how, how steep is the decline that we're going to? Uh, it's, it's steeper than normal. Like it seems okay. to be uh, definitely going down a lot. A lot <laughs> Nothing you have to like worry about, like whoa, 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 you know, anything like that. But, yeah, um, but it, uh, but the tunnel starts to narrow as you uh, slowly starts to narrow until you get start to get really claustrophobic. And by the time you reach the end of that two hundred feet, it's only about five feet wide and about five feet tall. So the tallest among you have to sort of duck your heads, Yoast on Weir. Um, yeah, and y'all definitely. And it's dripping with moisture around here now, like visibly dripping. It's much more humid here. Okay. And. Okay. <laughs> oh, he's uh, a piranha. <laughs> that. Oh. Why is he laughing? <laughs> Why is he son laughing? of a bitch. <laughs> Why is he laughing at 1154, right? That's, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> I don't, okay. I don't think we're going to to the plunger town right now. Um, okay, so at at this point, right after about two hundred feet is 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 moved down, you can see that there is um, that the tunnel basically ends in a dead end. However, the ground opens up into a natural hole in the ground, right? And okay, the reason that you can uh, well, first of all, you can see it. Second of all, Gorn and more. Are you got you guys are still in front? Yeah, I'm we're doing the, okay. the thing. Okay. Yeah. So you, don't you, try and goonies water slide us right over the waterfall, <laughs> damn it. No, 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 no. So so the quarter the quarter basically in front of you basically ends, but it ends in like a like <clears throat> basically the tunnel instead of like sloping down just goes straight down. Right. And opens up into okay. like a five foot wide hole. Right. And uh, you can see that there is shining from the hole is definitely some heat signatures from below. Okay. Now okay. you know for you know for a fact that uh, by the time that you register the heat signatures, because they're not in your direct line of sight, you're just seeing the emanations come from from below the hole. That Lisbeth's lantern light has definitely gone, sh- shown into that hole. Do you understand you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But every everything is very very quiet. When it, when it triggers, Goran, you take a deep inhalation, and you can smell the definitive rank wet smell of baboon fur and this is probably a good point to <laughs> stop <laughs> I <called it. laughs> the session <laughs> everything's very very quiet and dark but yeah you can smell baboons you brought the grenades right is it <laughs> the only way to be sure yeah exactly <laughs> all right yeah well i think we found plunger town <laughs> I think we. 
Wow. But you, uh, if there's something down there, who knows if there is, uh, it is likely that if they can sense light, they have sensed you. Right. Nah. I mean, that's one thing that we noticed about the baboons <laughs> is they were typically pretty just oblivious to most things. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. All right. So Fine. We'll, we'll leave it there. Lots to discuss in the intervening week. <laughs> you need to see David's look of resignation. <laughs> let, me, let me get the Zoom he working. I won't even be here next week. Just let him be. <laughs> go in the MTC shield. <laughs> David's like, I don't even want to be here yeah. next week. <laughs> oh, oh, so oh, I've got the <laughs> flu. It's to get, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Look at okay. it this way. Like we had sessions where we would make, you know, we'd map out like 60 feet. And this time we've done thousands. You have. We're yeah. awesome. We're getting yeah. really good at this. You have mapped out a, a, a significant portion. You've traveled a long distance in these tunnels. It's kind of hard yeah. to get the breadth of it, but yeah. Okay. We will pick wow. it up next time where they are going to have to decide wow. what they are going to do in this very tense situation. Um, and in the meantime, uh, everyone, thank you so much for tuning into 3D6 down the line. Please don't forget to like, and subscribe and please share amongst your friends if you've enjoyed this so far. And with that said, we will see you next time. Everyone have a great week. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Thanks John. You, John. Good night.